although I was part of a large corporate, I started as a startup. I joined that company in 2010. I was the first person to join in the defense group. Today, this year, we should, along with my subsidiaries, do about 1,700 crores of business, and 1,300 crores out of that is exports outside India. And Defense Secretary did mention about the quality of products. I can assure you, sir, the guns which we have exported are better looking than any other gun in the world, and we believe we have a word beater. So we can assure you on the quality. But my talk today is more towards the people who are sitting in this hall. Their recent geostrategic happenings have brought out two lessons. First and the foremost is that in times of war, you cannot depend somebody else to take care of your backside, which means if you want to be a nation which can hold its own, you need to have a defense ecosystem or industrial base which is not reliant on foreign technology or foreign products. The second thing was that India wants to grow its economy. We are talking already about touching 4 trillion this year. We have a target of touching 5 trillion in next two years time. And we are also wanting that 25% of that growth should be coming from manufacturing. If you take a look at it, today our manufacturing is approximately 16%. If you have to grow to 25%, the manufacturing has to double in two to three years time from where we are. And the white spaces available in the manufacturing sector were in the area which was defense and aerospace. So if you are looking at these white spaces to be covered to take care of the manufacturing of the country, defense and aerospace needs a Philip. It's no rocket science that we need to grow our manufacturing in defense and aerospace. Now let me come back to you. How do you grow manufacturing in defense and aerospace? We need to have an ecosystem which is based on a vibrant defense industrial base. And two constituents of that ecosystem or the so-called industrial base are technology and the manufacturing competence. In terms of manufacturing competence, this country has already shown that we are capable of doing high technology manufacturing. So we, what we need to take a look is at the technology ecosystem. Now technology ecosystem consists of three segments. First is research and development, which generally would remain a state function. You will be carrying out research in certain fundamental categories, and this would generally be going from TR1 to TR3, 4, nothing beyond. The second part of the development is called innovation. Innovation is a step-by-step -step improvement in research and development. It is improving upon something which is happening. But the most important is what we call the breakthrough technologies. Now, breakthrough technologies cause disruption. And where do they happen? 95% of the breakthrough technologies have come out of garages, which is what it means that they come out of startups. I was reading a very interesting book called The Conflict. It's a wonderful book written which sums up all the conflicts which had taken place from First World War till Ukraine War, which is as recent as last year. And the three lessons which come out of that book is that you cannot predict with confidence where the defense technologies are headed. After the First World War, there was a mention that with the Air Force being available, you will never need Army and Navy. But you all know where we stand. So the book says that there are three things which are going to happen into the future. The first is that technology is going to change at a pace faster than you anticipate. Secondly, the warfare will start engulfing the domains where they haven't gone before. 
And the third and the most important part was that the technology development will now happen in civilian domain rather than in the military domain. Till 2000 or till 1950s or 90s, most of the leading technologies were developed in the military domain. Not so. Today, the technologies are going to be developed in civilian domain, which will find themselves getting into the military domain. This is exactly what startups can do. They can bring those technologies, they can bring those real breakthrough technologies will change the face of the warfare which are going to happen and which are going to be done by the startups. Let me also link this with what happened in the warfare. We are at the cusp of what we call RMA 3.0. There was first came revolution in military affairs 1.0. India was nowhere on the scene. We were not even ready. 2.0 was all about command and control, communication, software defined stuff, and we kept playing catch up. We did have the inherent capability in the country, but we were never being able to catch up. Till today, major weapon platforms which came into the country, which were imported, had generally the fire control systems and softwares written outside the country. Of course, things have changed drastically in last 10 years, but this was the situation. Now we are at the cusp of what we call RMA 3.0. And this is the place where we need to be the lead player in the world. And that leadership can only come about when you have something what the startups bring to the front. Just to give you an example, today, roughly, give and take, I think uh, Virmani will probably confirm that. We have about 864 startups in defense space in the country. I was mentioned in T-Hub, you have 70 of them. The, how did this fire ignite? Till about five years ago, six years ago, we hardly had few startups in defense. IDEX program started and startups started to see light at the end of the tunnel. And suddenly you found they grew exponentially in this market. Today, 864, maybe 1,000. And when we are talking about, and the Defense Secretary was mentioning about Aditi, where you will have 25 crores funding. We were talking about Adit, uh, IDEX Prime, where there's 10 crore funding. All these are way forwards to ignite that fire. What we really want to do is, there should not be 10, 20, 30, there should be thousands of startups. India should be the next startup nation. We already third in the global list. Last year we had 8,000 startups. But United States has 30,000. So we really need to go there to become the startup nation. And that startup nation will happen when you see more and more initiatives like T Hub. I think the only thing which is holding back Indian innovation and startup revolution is perhaps the capital. I think it was already mentioned, we did sign one, I think one MOU has been signed. Moment these things are put into place, I think, tell you, sky's the limit. Each one of you would have seen either on the 30th January or on last Defense Expo or even recently, a SOM drone display being done. If I'm not mistaken, it was being done by an Indian startup. The total cost of that SOM drone was less than 65 lakh rupees, including the drones. We as Indians have that capability of frugal engineering and frugal development. My last point, just to give you that confidence, today we have 450,000 engineers working as centers of excellence for R&D for foreign MNCs. And just the last year's data says that in last five years, foreign OEMs have saved $80 billion in research and development costs by having their centers in India. Cost of development in India still is around $40 per hour 
for a very fine research and development engineer compare that to almost 160 euros to 200 dollars in united states of america so we are blessed in this country with the capability to take us to the next level all we need is little more light at the end of the tunnel and i'm sure this will be provided shortly with these words i wish each one of you great times smooth sailing and fantastic developments going into the future thank you so much